Um, so I'm Peter Shosholi. Uh, I live in New York City and in Brooklyn. And um, my background is really an eclectic mix of movement, dance, sports, um, classical, Western European violin, voice, uh, theater. So um, maybe 12 to 15 years ago, I started to develop a practice for myself called Voice as Movement. And the idea was a somewhat inherited idea from uh, mentors such as Meredith Monk of the voice and the body being one thing. But there's really not a separation between our voices and our bodies. Uh, maybe that's just more a matter of how we're perceiving visual perception of the body moving and an aural perception of the voice sounding. Um, I'm particularly interested in this notion of synesthesia or multi-perceptual capability. Um, I feel it's really interconnected to our senses of feeling more alive and uh, maybe in a highfalutin sort of way, um, notions of human evolution. How can we continue to expand our perception and um, live more deeply among ourselves, with ourselves, and in the world. Um, a usual trajectory that I kind of follow when I'm offering classes, workshops, mentorship, private coachings, um, is to begin with the breath and to integrate a lot of different breath practices. Um, and then thinking of the breath as the, the thing that we start from in order to make any kind of sound. From there, we go into sounding, into finding resonance throughout our whole bodies, um, our ability to direct vibration through the whole body. Um, and that can extend further into articulation, into speech, um, into sounds that you can make with all the different parts of your mouth, um, places that you can resonate inside of your mouth. Um, and then that notion of extending into singing uh, elongation of tones, moving, you know, resonance and pitches throughout throughout your body, uh, following patterns, matching pitch. <clears throat> um, yeah, and similarly, I think there's an aspiration to share practices that help people to discover more of what's in them, uh, and as a way to extend a kind of or expand a kind of toolbox. To draw from, especially when you're creating work. Uh, we all have our built-in habits, or we start from really nothing. Uh, or, you know, we're like, oh, I have this curiosity, how do I deepen my research and, uh, you know, come to fulfill a vision. Um, so my hope is that, you know, this is offering more of those tools. I love what you just said because this is one of the main reasons I wanted to work with you because uh, I think both you and me are in, in the business, let's call it that way, uh, of devising. What does it mean to devise? Was it, what does it mean to come into the studio not knowing what you're doing, having your body, uh, and maybe a sliver of an idea? Um, so the process becomes a devising process, an emergent process that comes from the body uh, versus an idea or a pre-written text or a some kind of uh, other input that your brain crunches and decides how it's going to be and then you do it. Um, so it's a very, it's very different. It's a different process. Um, it's a different process and it has its tools. And um, I'm really, really excited that we're working on that. My practice um, comes from moving and speaking. So I have been in, in that practice for a while. That's a practice of devising, a practice of getting content from my body uh, and potential for meaning and written poetry sometimes. Um, and in the last year from speaking, I started going into singing. Um, so the singing actually, the curiosity about singing, the curiosity about how do I use my voice, what are the possibilities, as you said, um, in, in all, all, the, all the possibilities of the resonance of the face and the, 
in the mouth were a curiosity. And I'm <laughs> excited and glad that we are connecting in that level. Same. Same. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the voice is as individual to you as your, you know, your face, your, your thumbprint. Um, no one in the world sounds like you. And uh, there's something kind of special and celebratory of, about that, potentially. And sometimes something that's a little alienating and foreign about that, like, you know, encountering people who really don't like the sound of their own voice. Or the notion that when you hear your recorded voice, it's like that doesn't feel it's like me, yeah. um, and this extends also into you know um, notions of singing and what that means to be able to sing, or uh, whether you're a good singer or not. Um, I like to kind of debunk the mythology that like you know not everybody can sing. Um, so you know how do you uncover a connection to your breath and. Um, but it feels also like a work of identity. You're, mm. you're interrogating your own identity through your breath, which is so basic. It is so basic. We are alive, we must breathe. breathe. And how do we do that? Um, and then where do we hold? And then when sound comes up, it, it is a little bit of facing like, oh, this is me and my body and everything and anything it can do. Um, yeah. There's so much in that 